Good morning, everyone. I know many of you have seen reports about my mum. I want to let you know that I've spoken with her and she's doing just fine. I'm thankful to everyone who's reached out and uh, want to also thank the first responders who were there doing an extraordinary job. This morning, our thoughts go out to those of you who live in Fort McMurray as you deal with spring flooding. Minister Blair has spoken with Mayor Scott about the situation and we stand ready to help. To all the first responders and volunteers out there placing sandbags, including around the hospital, thank you. Across the country, there are other communities dealing with flooding right now too. So to everyone, continue listening to officials as they work to keep you and your family safe. This comes during what's already a tough time, but I know Canadians will continue to work together. Shortly, I'll join members of Parliament from across the country for a virtual meeting of the House of Commons. Despite the challenges of this pandemic, our democratic institutions are innovating and finding ways to keep serving people. Parliamentarians are working together with the same goal, supporting Canadians and keeping our country strong. As part of this sitting, at noon, Minister Haidu will provide an update on the new COVID-19 modelling, and Dr. Tam will also do the same. Based on the best data available, this is an updated picture of where we think we are right now and where we think things will go from here. They'll provide more details, but here's the bottom line. The measures we've taken so far are working. In fact, in many parts of the country, the curve has flattened, but we're not out of the woods yet. We're in the middle of the most serious public health emergency Canada has ever seen. And if we lift measures too quickly, we might lose the progress we've made. So we all need to be very careful for ourselves and especially for the most vulnerable, like our parents, grandparents, and elders in long-term care facilities. Earlier this month, when we released the first modelling, I said that the path ahead was up to us. And the same holds true today. How many new cases there are, how many losses we have to mourn, whether our hospitals can continue to cope. It's all up to all of us. You've already stepped up to help your family, friends, neighbours and frontline care workers stay safe. And your governments across the country are stepping up as well. We're a big country and we don't always agree on everything. But right now, the premiers and the federal government are working together to fight this crisis. We need common guidelines to make sure that the decisions being taken across the country are grounded in a shared understanding and appreciation of what science and experts are telling us. Shortly, we'll be releasing the shared principles on restarting the economy agreed to by the federal provincial and territorial governments. Let me be clear, these are not the specific measures when you can go back to work or school or when you can see your neighbours or extended family or friends. This framework will lay out the things that need to happen before we take any next steps. Restarting our economy will be gradual and careful and will be guided by science. Here's what the guidelines mean for you. Controlling transmission is key. You already know that if your neighbourhood doesn't have new cases, if your province is flattening the curve, this is a good sign for being able to slowly look at lifting some restrictions. So we need to know where things stand. To reopen the economy, there must be enough capacity to test and trace COVID-19 to control any new spread. For you, that means knowing that you'll be safe at work when you go back. You'll see lots more testing, and if someone around you does test positive, you'll be notified quickly so you can isolate. At work, there will also need to be specific measures and more equipment to keep you safe. And for hospitals, we need to make sure they can continue to cope, not just for COVID-19 patients, but for everyone who needs care. And for certain groups who are very vulnerable, like seniors and those in long-term care facilities, strong measures will have to be in place for longer. This virus is taking a different toll on different people. We must be mindful of that. Whether you're facing domestic violence or living in a remote community or a long-term care facility, we're working or working on the front lines. We're here for you. Our priority is keeping all Canadians safe while getting back to normal as much as we can. Aujourd'hui, 
on publie les dernières prévisions sur l'évolution de la COVID-19. Dans bien des régions du pays, le virus a ralenti sa progression, mais on n'est pas sorti du bois. On fait face à l'une des crises de santé publique les plus graves de l'histoire de notre pays. Et si on lève les restrictions trop vite, on pourrait perdre tous les progrès qu'on a réalisés. Même si les tendances nous encouragent, on doit rester prudent. Et à certains endroits, surtout dans les CHSLD, on va encore devoir faire plus. Mais comme je l'ai dit déjà, chacun d'entre nous décidera la suite des choses. Combien de nouveaux cas on va avoir? Combien de familles seront dans le deuil? Est-ce que notre système de santé va tenir le coup? Tout ça, ça dépend de nous tous. La bonne nouvelle, c'est que les gens posent les bons gestes pour se protéger les uns les autres. Mais il faut continuer. Continuez de rester chez vous. Faites l'épicerie une fois par semaine au moins. Gardez une distance de deux mètres avec les autres et suivez les directives de santé publique. D'ici peu, on va partager l'ensemble de principes communs concernant la relance de l'économie sur lequel le gouvernement fédéral et les gouvernements provinciaux et territoriaux se sont entendus. Ces principes établissent les conditions qui doivent être en place avant qu'on puisse commencer à lever les restrictions. Par exemple, les capacités en matière de dépistage et de suivi de la COVID-19 doivent être suffisantes pour nous permettre de contrôler la propagation, et c'est pourquoi on intensifie le dépistage et on met en place les outils nécessaires le plus rapidement possible. Il doit y avoir des mesures spécifiques et du nouvel équipement pour vous protéger au travail. Et pour certains groupes particulièrement vulnérables, comme les aînés et ceux qui résident dans des établissements de soins de longue durée, des mesures plus rigoureuses vont devoir rester en vigueur plus, plus longtemps. Notre priorité, c'est d'assurer la sécurité des Canadiens pendant que la vie commence à reprendre son cours. Today, I also want to provide an update on personal protective equipment, which, along with physical distancing, is key to keeping people safe. Every few days, we receive new deliveries of vital supplies for our frontline workers. This week, we'll be shipping over six million sur surgical masks to the provinces and territories. More than 100,000 face shields that we ordered from Bauer and Toronto Stamp are also ready and will be shipped out soon with more on the way. Everyone deserves to be safe on the job. Indeed, on this national day of mourning, We remember those who died, were injured, or fell ill because of their work. And this year, we pay tribute to the thousands of frontline workers across the country who deserve not just our thanks, but our support. Aujourd'hui, je veux aussi faire une mise à point sur l'équipement de protection individuelle qui assure la sécurité des travailleurs de première ligne. On reçoit des cargaisons et des livraisons de matériel médical plusieurs fois par semaine. Cette semaine, on va envoyer plus de 6 millions de masques chirurgicaux aux provinces et aux territoires. Plus de 100 000 visières de protection faciale qu'on a commandées de Bauer et de Toronto Stamp sont aussi prêtes et seront envoyées très bientôt. Tout le monde mérite d'être en sécurité au travail. En ce jour de deuil national, nous nous souvenons de ceux qui ont perdu la vie, qui ont été blessés ou qui sont devenus malades dans l'exercice de leurs fonctions. Et cette année, on salue nos travailleurs de première ligne à travers le pays qui méritent non seulement nos remerciements, mais aussi notre appui. Je veux aussi rappeler à tout le monde que les entreprises qui ont besoin de subventions salariales d'urgence peuvent maintenant déposer une demande. Depuis hier, plus de 44 000 entreprises ont déjà présenté leur demande en ligne. To get through this, We must work together, and we must stay united. Now, more than ever, we have to stand up against discrimination and division. There is no place for racism against Asian Canadians in our neighborhoods. There is no place for anti-Semitism, which B'nai B'rith Canada's report found to be on the rise in our communities, because hatred of any sort has no place in Canada. Today, and every day. We are stronger together. Merci.